Hey everyone and welcome. Today I'm gonna take this raw file and really change it completely into a super vibrant and very very colorful image like this while explaining to you every single step that I do from start to finish. So this is a picture of a black swan I took in at the zoo and I really really like this framing and I really like the fact that he's looking directly into the camera and to the settings ISO 400 this was shot handheld 300 millimeters on a Canon 600D which is an equivalent of about 480 millimeters f5.6 is the lowest as my lens would go and 1 1 25th of a second shutter speed thanks to VR in the Tamron lens we actually managed to get a very sharp shot at that low of a shutter speed especially if you're considering that this was shot on 480 millimeters full frame equivalent Alright, so this is definitely one of my all-time favorite pictures when, once I'm done editing. So let's get started with it. First thing I'm gonna do is crop the image. And you, as you can see, there are some weird feathers down here and I really don't want them in my shot. So I'm just gonna crop out something like that to make sure it's not too much and just press enter. And we already have a much cleaner picture. Then color temperature, very very important here. I really want to go with a very very warm color temperature. I really think that works the best, the absolute best for this picture. Something like that. We can always change this later. And as you can see with the histogram, the exposure is kind of a little bit too low. So I'm just gonna spread out the histogram a little bit and bring up the exposure. And right now it seems a little bit overexposed, but I'm gonna fix that in a second. I love to have that much detail to play with. Now it's definitely not ideal that if you shoot that ISO 400 and then raise the exposure further in post, but because this is a raw file, we will still be able to get a lot of detail and a lot of quality out of this shot. Alright, so next thing I'm definitely gonna add some contrast and you can see it's really a flat picture like that, so by adding contrast that really changes everything here. You don't want to overdo that, otherwise it becomes a little bit too much, but I'm just going to stick around 60, 65 here. Then I want to bring down the highlights just so these bright parts in the feathers don't look as bright. I really think that looks way better. Then shadows, I'm actually going to go a little bit minus shadows here. Usually I go plus shadows, but for this picture I really like the look of minus shadows. And then I bring the white slide to the right. It's very important that you hold down the all key if you do that so you make sure that nothing is clipped everything that's black is not clipped and everything that has another color down black will be clipped so you want to make sure that you bring that to the right and just stop before anything clips because you definitely don't want anything clipped in your shot otherwise you will just have portions of your image with pure white and that definitely doesn't look good in most of the cases and in this case especially. So I'm just going to bring that to the right and stop before anything clips. Then blacks, it's going to be really, you know, up to you what you want to do with the blacks. I usually bring them down in quite a lot of my cases. I really like the additional different contrast look that it gives, but I'm definitely not going to overdo that here, just a little bit. And let's see, clarity. Now, clarity is a thing, especially with bird pictures, I don't really like to add too much clarity because it makes the whole picture look very harsh and, you know, a bird is such a soft thing, such soft feathers, you really don't do it any favor by making it look so harsh. So I much rather have a look that is kind of soft. You can still add a little bit of clarity, but just be sure to not overdo that then vibrance because this is a raw file that means the whole picture is relatively neutral and kind of washed out at the start so we have a lot of information to work with so if you work with a raw file I definitely suggest you to bring up the vibrance in quite a lot of the cases you don't always have to do it but for this picture it definitely definitely works really really nicely here 
then I think we're done with the basics adjustments. By the way, I really like vibrance better than saturation because saturation really adds color way worse. It makes the whole picture look very unnatural and ugly compared to the vibrance tools. So that does a much better job. Then let's see, actually the thing that I've missed is tint. And I think the tint here in a picture like this really isn't going to be that big of a deal because it's already pretty good how it was at the start. So yeah, I'm not going to change anything there. Then tonal curve here, definitely a thing that you want to do is bring up the highlight slider here. The tonal curve highlight slider is completely different to the highlight slider up here. The highlight slider and the basics adjustments will just change the overall bright parts of the image while the highlight slider down here will just change the very bright parts and I really really like to bring that up down here because it adds so much more dynamic and so much more interest to the picture. Then the rest of these sliders down here I'd suggest you just to play around with them and just stick with, you know, with whatever works best here. I think that works pretty good. Let's see shadows. I might even bring down the shadows a little bit. And actually, I think the picture is a little bit too harsh. So sometimes I really adjust something. And, you know, after some more adjustments, it kind of changes the whole look. So it's often worth to go a little bit back up to where you adjusted previously and change something here. For example, here, I really think actually clarity doesn't work at all. And I'm actually going to go minus clarity just because it's way too harsh, even with just a little bit of plus clarity. So just around minus 10, minus 12 here. And I definitely like this look a lot better. Then the HSL tool here, you just want to grab this little pinpointer whereby hue, saturation and luminance separately and just go over the color you want to change and then just press down the left mouse click and just play around with it and just stick with whatever works best. And I think I'm going to go a little bit more into the oranges here. I definitely don't like this look very much. So a little bit darker, more towards the orangey tones works pretty good here. And if you have some other very prominent colors, for example, large portions of blue in the sky, you definitely want to play around with the blue separately as well. But for here, really, we just have pretty much yellows and oranges. Uh, we do have some greens, but they also have a very orangey touch. So I'm just going to go straight away down to saturation and do the same thing as I did above. Just grab this little pinpointer and move around the mouse and stick with whatever works best and the luminance as well. Here I'm definitely gonna bring up the lumens just a little bit. Alright, so that works pretty good. That looks pretty good. Split toning, you could add some more color either in the highlights or in the shadows. However, I really think we already have plenty of color for this picture, so that's definitely not needed. Then let's go down to the detail tool. Now detail tool, you definitely want to make sure that you zoom in one to one so you actually see what you do with sharpening here. Here. and sharpening I often like to add sharpening in quite a lot of my landscape pictures but for burr pictures it really makes everything look a little bit too harsh so if you want to add sharpening here I'd suggest you not to do it too much but for this picture right here because this is a very soft bird picture with quite a lot of feathers I'm not gonna add any additional sharpening to what Lightroom added on default so I'm gonna zoom back uh, out again and bring the masking slider to the right while holding down the ALT key. So that way you can select where the actual sharpening takes place and everything that's black is not going to be sharpened and everything that's white is going be, to be sharpened. So you want to make sure that you, for example, don't select too much of the non texture background or if you have a sky or a lake, you of course don't really want to sharpen that. So you want to make sure that you bring the mask into the right so everything that you don't want sharpened is pretty much black. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just, you know, so you don't select too much of it. 
So that looks pretty good here, that way only the very textures of the feathers will get sharpened. And that's definitely what I'm going for here. Then noise reduction. Noise reduction is really a tool that I don't really like because it makes the whole picture look very plasticky and it takes away a lot of detail. But that said, if you have too much noise, then that's definitely something you have to deal with and it's definitely better to go with a little bit of a plasticky look rather than a super grainy look. But for this picture right here, I mean maybe a little bit of noise reduction would uh, help it because there is a little bit of noise and just around 10 works pretty good here. And then the last slider down here is the color slider and this is absolutely an amazing slider. This will get rid of the purple and green sensor noise in your picture for example. This is a very large area full of it and it's something that you probably won't even notice unless you know the difference between with and without. So I'm just gonna bring color slider here to around 80 and you can see how much cleaner everything looks and here's once again here's at 25 and here's at around 80 all of this portion and all of the picture especially the shadow portions look so much cleaner and i absolutely love this slider and it really doesn't have any bad impact on any of the color so absolutely amazing slider definitely take advantage of it down here at the lens corrections, just gonna do my basic thing, go to my profile corrections and choose my lens, in this case the Tamron 722-300, and it will get rid of the distortion as well as the vignetting. Distortion is definitely a nice thing to have, but sometimes I even like to bring the vignetting down a little bit because it almost looks a little bit too bright in the corner sometimes, so I like the look of just adding a little bit of vignetting but not going to a hundred there. And then to my second and last adjustment here in the lens corrections, just go to color and click on remove chromatic aberration and that way you will get rid of the purple and green fringing on the high contrast edges, so that's definitely a nice thing to have. Then down here at the facts you could add additional vignetting, definitely don't go with plus vignetting, absolutely looks terrible, but sometimes a little bit of minus vignetting can actually help, because it helps to give a little bit more attention towards the center of your picture, definitely don't overdo that as well, but sometimes just a little bit, maybe like minus 11, works pretty good, so I think I'm just gonna stick there, and grain, definitely something you don't want to add, just ignore that, absolutely looks terrible. Then let's go down to the camera calibration, which is the last global adjustment. First thing you want to do here is just play around with these profiles and just stick with whatever looks best. So just go through these, it's sometimes pretty difficult to choose because they kind of look very similar to each other sometimes, but you know, it's definitely worth because in a lot of cases there's definitely a color or a look that I really like better. For example here, let's see Adobe Standard versus Camera Standard. It's almost a little bit oversaturated, so I think I'm just gonna stick with Adobe Standard here, which is the default. I think that looks best, but in a lot of cases I go with something else there, so you just wanna make sure to play around with it. And then these primary color sliders, there really isn't any set tactic to those. I really just play around with these and stick with whatever looks best. Because this is a very CPU intensive task, I'm just gonna speed up the footage of me editing these sliders and I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm back after messing around with these primary color sliders, here is before and here's after. It really doesn't have that big of an impact in this picture, but it's definitely a little bit better and it's definitely visible, but in some pictures it might have a very very big impact, especially if you're working for example with a landscape picture or a sunset picture. But it's definitely worth to play around with these in any case because you really don't know what you will end up with. Alright, so we're done with the global adjustments. Let me just 
quickly fine tune the clarity once again because I think I might even go a little bit more into the minus just a little bit more that looks pretty good and in terms of color temperature let me see I might have added a little bit too much warm tones so I think I'm just gonna go slightly back just around 200 less and I like this look a little bit better so this is an animal picture, so I'm not going to add that much local adjustments. I'm not going to add any dodge and burning or graduated filter just because the picture doesn't need it. That's really something I usually do on my landscapes. But for this picture, if you zoom in one to one, you can see a lot of just dirt and straw and whatever these things are on these feathers. So in this case I'm just gonna grab a spot removal tool, make sure it's on heel and just get rid of them one by one really just to make everything look a little bit cleaner. Now this process on this picture will take probably anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes depending on how much or how in depth you want to go with it. But of course in your regular wildlife picture that might be something that you don't even have to do. But in this case I definitely think the feathers look way better after removing these spots. But I really don't want to bore you with adding you know, all of these spot removal tools all over the place for 20 minutes. I'm just gonna leave them out and say that I'm done with this picture. So as always, let's see where we started at. Here is the before, one slight room loads, and I mean it's completely different, really totally different picture. And here's what we've ended up with, which really is a very, very vibrant and very high quality, really, really beautiful picture of this swan. And once again, if you will really take some time to get rid of these, all of these dirt spots on his feathers, then you would get a really really clean image as well but you definitely can see the difference between before and after is absolutely dramatic and absolutely insane and i really really love this picture so i really hope you could learn something from this tutorial if you did so please give me a thumbs up that is always very very much appreciated and of course if you did not learn anything from the tutorial be sure to give me a thumbs down so I can improve my videos in the future. And if you would like to see more videos just like this one, other Lightroom tutorials, landscape photography edits and all kind of photography videos, be sure to subscribe. I'm currently uploading one photography related video every single day of the week. So anyways, enough of me talking now, thank you very very much for watching and I want to wish you a great day.